Hello and welcome to the season premiere of Coach's Corner Boys Soccer Edition. I'm Bill Coleman with Danny Lynch for HWTV, and today we're joined by Varsity Boys Soccer Head Coach Michael E. Rush. Coming off a successful season, the Wolverines are in preseason play, getting ready to make a run at the Mission League title. So can you start off by just giving us a little background information about yourself and your coaching career? Yeah, so it goes back about uh, almost 16, 17 years ago. Uh, went to school at Loyola Marymount, was a student athlete there, did my graduate degree there, and then uh, played professional for four years. Uh, and then when I was a pro and I was retiring at an early age, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to go back to my alma mater and start coaching right away. I was very fortunate. And so from 2007, uh, I've been a college coach, high school coach, club coach, club director, uh, I've worked with different U.S. soccer events, ODP, PDP, uh, you name it. I've been part of it. Um, but again, that's just kind of when I started and where I am today. Awesome. So let's jump right into it. Um, about the team this year, how do you think that this year's team differs from last year's team? You guys obviously had a lot of seniors graduate last year. So what do you think the main differences are between the two teams? You know, it's been it's been a process from day one. I challenged uh, all my student athletes to to play at high level club teams, high leagues, and I think we started about you know when I first came here in 2019 during or 2020 during COVID, we had a probably what. 15 20 percent of the team playing at levels like that now we're up to 70 80 percent and the number is going to keep on rising um so i think they've bought in to the process of from day one uh they play year round we've done a almost a year-long program here at harvard westlake uh with sports performance uh team building and then uh, obviously now uh, in the season uh we're seeing a lot of progress with a lot of our players from freshmen playing and all the way through to, to our seniors now, this team is running with an undefeated season so far. And I mean, you're heading into your second part of league, which is also going to determine who's your who the Mission League title goes to. What is your goal for the second half of the season? To win tomorrow. So um, for me personally and, and for the team, I mean, we're going to have a meeting today to discuss about it. It's not about the Mission League to win it. Obviously, that's one of our goals. But I think right now it's one game at a time uh, with tomorrow's game. Uh, but ultimate goal is obviously this team hasn't won in a long time, the Mission League. So I think that's in the back of their minds, which is great. But it at the end of the day, it's just one game at a time. So Danny mentioned that you guys have an undefeated record right now. You know, what are some things that you kind of um, credit to the, the early season success that you guys have had? I definitely want to give credit to the seniors, um, you know, Asher, um, Charlie, SJ, Will, we have a little core senior group that's been committed and done so much work and which kind of is a trickle down effect to the juniors, sophomores and freshmen. Uh, also, my staff has put in a lot of hours into this. Um, so it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, I know Danny mentioned the undefeated. For me, it's, you know, all about tomorrow. It's great to, to see that record. But for me, it's like, let's just move on and get ready for the next opportunity, next game which is tomorrow, and then we focus on other things. But it's like one step at a time. But, you know, in regards to the seniors, to the staff, to the administration, for all the support, and even you guys, what you guys do for our student-athlete experience is unbelievable. Um, so that that's part of it. It, it, takes, a, it, it takes a village to, to be successful. So, you know, you talked a lot about how your your um, vision and your focus is really on tomorrow. You're looking to about the next day, trying to get the win the next day. Um, but do you have a sort of overall season goal where before you, the season you said, here's where we want to end up at the end of the season? You know, was it to win the Mission League? Was it to go for a CIF title? What was that? Well, I think as a, as a coach program head uh, and any coach, uh, any team that I work with, you want to compete for championships. Um, I knew coming to Harvard Westlake is a special opportunity, and I wanted to put my name and boys soccer into the pro into the history books because again you walk down the hallway um and boys soccer is is kind of nowhere to be seen um and that kind of puts frustration to me and all my frustration i put out on the field to make sure the guys are performing at their best um so yeah so you want to compete for championships you want i want to have kids here that are successful in the classroom and then also competing for championships now, also looking at this team dynamic, it just seems like there's been a shift somewhat from last year, too, with how the team runs. And it seems like this team, when they're playing, it's very fast paced, high tempo, high press, always like going after it. What do you think made you want to change like kind of the dynamic of this team from last year to this year? The biggest thing was the culture change in regards to the buy in into the program of what it takes to 
to win <laughs> and understand the roles and responsibilities tactically to know how we're going to press, how we're going to play. Um, so many different meetings. I know they laugh at me of how many team meetings we have in videos. Um, but I think it's really important that they've bought into the culture change, the work on the, in the, on the field, in the weight room. Um, so that's been the biggest change for us. Yeah, and also I've watched a couple of your guys' games, and this team's defense is just, like, imposing. You guys are always looking for double teams, always just working off the ball just to get back and just get back on offense. What do you think this says about this team's grit and how hard they work outside? Yeah, that's a great word, Danny. Grit is is kind of the word that we use. Um, you know, our team kind of mentality is being relentless, um, but I truly believe def defense wins championships. So I'd rather win one nothing than win six five that's me personally um so that you know we're going to be very organized in the back we're going to be defending with numbers um and it's going to be hard to break us down uh, you know i i'm not all about stats but i know we've had a lot of shutouts and and going into each game i challenge the back line and the goalkeepers to get as many shutouts as they want someone asked me you know what's the school record on shutouts i said i have no idea someone asked me what the sh school record of winning is i have no idea uh, it's all about the next opportunity yeah, speaking on your team's defense, they just have immense ke uh, chemistry. You have JT Fetterman, Asher Rawson, and then you also have Will Sherwood, who's commanding the whole team. What do you think it says having leadership like that um, for the team? I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have obviously Asher is a senior, JT is a junior, um, Will's a senior. Uh, it's the most important position, the two center backs and the goalkeeping. Their leadership's unbelievable. Um, you know, and, and they make everyone else better by communicating and organizing. And the two, you know, I would say the three love to play. So all the video that we do, you know, all the Zooms that we do, all the meetings that we do is they they love the information. Sometimes me as a coach think it's too much information, but they just want the information and they want to challenge themselves to, be, to make sure we get shutouts. Yeah, not only is this team a defensive force, though, you guys also have such great attackers and you have defenders scoring all over the place as well. But having players like Josh Barnavarn and Theo Otteson, they're dynamic players, they're aggressive, they have great skill. How does having them on the team just like show what an attacking force that this team can also be? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's also important to know that in order to score, someone's got to create. So our midfielders are really good um, combining uh playing and getting numbers into the attack. We've committed a lot into the attacking phase of the game. So, um, yes, Theo, Josh, you know, we also have Race, who's a great playmaker defensively. Um, you know, and I think something different this year is the depth. You know, we've had, you know, in previous years, I smile when I say this, it's been many more rotations, but now it's like consistent rotations where guys know the roles, they know what to do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to have one goal scorer. It's nicer to have two. And then, you know, a couple of third and fourth goal scores always helps the team to get more victories. Yeah. And also on rotations, it just seems like you're all like always able to put guys in and just like it's always it's still the same tempo, same stuff going on. Like this team just is so, so, so very deep. I think uh, I mean, thank you very much. Yeah. That's a great point. I think they tr we trust each other. Yeah. I think that's really important to be successful. The communication, the trust between player and coach needs to be there. Mm -hmm. So um, I've, I've been very fortunate to have a group that is bought in the culture change and they trust each other. Yeah, I also just want to highlight some of your younger players. You have players like Micah Rawson and Ray Sirota, like who we brought up earlier. But what do you think just having players like them, they're so young and but so talented, what does this say about the future of this Harvard Westlake team? Uh, I would say it, it's going to be great. Uh, it's going to get better every year as a coach. You want to make sure your team's heading in the right direction. Um, there's a lot of growing pains uh, being, you know, we even have freshmen playing, sophomores. But uh, I'm I'm excited. But, you know, like the short term goal is to get through tomorrow, get hopefully to Mission League and then hopefully have an opportunity to play in CIF. So I did just hear recently that um, Junior Shubi Iriofen is no longer going to be el eligible to play for you guys. So how will his loss affect the, the team going forward? Um, it won't be a loss at all. Uh, we're 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 going to keep going. Um, you know, Shubi was uh, wasn't a starter for us. Uh, we have other players that are going to make up for it and, and work and compete uh, at a higher level. Teams like Chaminade and Loyola are going to be the main teams that are competing with you for the league title. I know that you guys just had a tie with Loyola. You went uh, to, uh, on the road. You guys tied with them. So um, what was kind of the takeaways from that game? How did the team handle that? Were, were, were you guys disappointed at all or were you happy with that result? What I love the most is um, we presented to them how we're going to play, how we're going to defend. Um, and for us, and for me, looking at the body language after the game, they were so upset. To me, is 
it looked like they lost the game. And we had a conversation after the game. We talked about it. Um, and it was a very positive result. The Chaminade game could have gone either way. Credit to Chaminade. Um, but again, that's towards the end of the season. And we got things to focus on this this week and the next week. But for me, it's it's a very positive result at Loyola. Positive result here. And, and again, as we all know, Mission League is one of the toughest leagues. And, and every game matters. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck to you guys this week. I'm Danny Lynch with Bill Coleman, and we'll see you next time on Coach's Corner. Enjoy the game. Thank you, everyone.